Hi everyone, it's Jess aka Colouring Bumblebee and I'm back today with another video for you. This is going to be a, the start of a long series of my entire colouring book collection, completed pages and whips. Uh, it's going to be quite a few series of videos, so I'm going to start off today with my Johanna Basford collection. She was the first ever artist I bought colouring books for and she was the one that really got me into my adult colouring journey. I think I'm going to do it by the rough order, at least with my Johanna Basford books, the rough order that I purchased the books so then you can see a bit of my progression of colouring. I feel like that makes the most sense for at least this artist's books. For others I may do chronological order, I may do a random order, but for Joanna Basswell, I'm going to do the order I purchased in. So, let's get straight into it. So this was the very first colouring book I ever got. I went into B&M one day and I saw this lying on the shelf. And I'd actually been watching some YouTube videos recently. I think it was by Rachel Henderson. And I absolutely fell in love with colouring and Johanna Basford. I think I'd been searching around for books on Amazon and then a couple of days later I happened to find this on the shelves in B&M so I think it was about five pounds so I snatched it up and thought I'll buy one book for now see how I like it and then I can buy more and well as soon as I got it it pretty much stuck. So I've done the title page and we got some of my very early colourings in this and I used to not date them so you can tell when things are older because they haven't been dated I think I started dating pages in September of 2022 and I started colouring in around June of 2022 so there's a few months where I didn't date my pages this is the most recent page I coloured in this book this took me a while I wasn't happen happy with the background gradient so I kind of got demotivated from it, but I thought I'd better finish it up because it was a buddy colour with someone. So this took several months for me to finish, but I coloured it with some cheap pencils. I think they were Creative Peaks on this one. Looking at it now, it's not as bad as I remembered, but yeah, I think I could do a better job on the background nowadays. I absolutely love this double spread. So look at the tiger first. When I first started colouring, I only had a couple of cheap sets of pencils. I had the Creative Peaks and then I had about the Brute Funa squares. So a lot of my early colourings are with the Brute Funa squares because as soon as I got them, I think it was a month or so after I started colouring and until the new year in 2023, I exclusively coloured with Brute Funa squares. So I got this tiger one. I absolutely love how this one turned out. Still to this day, I love doing like a blended sky gradient with pencils. I love the shading on the tiger. And I like how I've put some pink details in some of the leaves to make it a bit different. And then I coloured the toucan page opposite to match the colour scheme. So I've got sort of a purple background. I've got the purple flowers, orange tiger, orange background, and the same colour scheme for the leaves. Yeah, I really like how this one turned out as well, and a bit of gold gel pen on the outside circle. Now this page was the very first page I ever coloured. And looking at it now, I made some questionable decisions, but I also like some of the things I did. I like how I've sort of done this, I'm not sure if you can see, in this sort of flicking motion on the flowers to give it a bit of texture, and the same on these leaves up here. But these I did with some colourful outlines and I think this was like a peachy colour and I hated how it looked so I went over it with black. And so that's the only thing of this page that I'm really not a fan of but the rest I think looks quite nice. I started this page I think last year around Valentine's Day I was going to colour this. I coloured this whilst I was on holiday in Cornwall 
and we were staying at this cozy little cottage and in the evenings I had a few pencils. I used the Stedler Design Journey pencils for this page and just spent the evenings watching films with my family, colouring a few leaves. And I thought, oh, I'll finish off the flowers when I get home and I just haven't come back to it. I would like to see this finished one day, but I haven't got plans at the moment. I've got lots of colouring plans to do right now and this isn't one of them but one day I'd love to finish this one. I did this panda page which I absolutely love. One of my favourite pages I did when I first started colouring. I believe I used the brute Fina squares. I think I could blend out the background a bit better nowadays but at the time I was really proud of it. And then I remember starting this page, I just saw it one day and thought I fancy colouring a background and that's something that you'll see quite often with my pages. I'll start by colouring the background and then I'm not so inspired to colour the rest. My idea was to use all different coloured greens in my pencil set at the time, which was the Creative Peaks. So I did a nice dark green for the background, I came in with a different green for these leaves and I've just abandoned it. I might finish it one day, but I'm not sure yet. I absolutely love these two pages. should really get around to colouring them. I've coloured a few in this book, but there's still quite a lot that hasn't been coloured. This is another one of my first colourings. I think this might have been the second page I coloured. And this was with the Creative Peaks pencils. And yeah, it's not too bad. Some of the blending is a bit questionable. but. I do quite like how the results are and at the time I was quite happy with it. I think if I did it nowadays I would have maybe some different colour leaves rather than just green. It looks a little boring to me but it's not too bad. I saw My Colourful Country Life did this page and it looks amazing with all the rainbow leaves. I might have to colour um, colour that page in the same sort of style that she did. Oh, this is my favourite page in the book and I wanted to colour it when I first got the book but I wanted to wait for my skills to become a bit better before I attempted it because I just love it so much and I've just never come back to it. Sort of since I got later colouring books I have slightly abandoned this one. Well, when was the last page I coloured? It was the 8th of January last year, so yeah, definitely overdue to colour in this again. This was another one of the first pages, it was either the second or third. I think I used a budget watercolour pencil set that my parents gave me years ago. Um, the blending of the gradient, looking at it now, is not very good. But I really like how this bird came out, really fun colour palette. And I like how I did this little gradient in the curtains and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I'd, it'd be fun to colour this one again, but I don't think I ever will. I've got so many other pages to colour that I just don't have the time to go recolour pages. Oh, this is another one of my favourite pages. I need to colour this as well. I remember I was super proud when I finished this page. I saw a picture on Instagram that used this colour palette and had this sort of bokeh effect in the background and I thought right let's give it a go and looking at it now I still love to look at it. I still haven't attempted a bokeh background since doing this one and it's all right but you can definitely see the pencil lines. I think I could do a better job but I don't know doing a bokeh background is still quite intimidating to me. It takes a lot of work with the pencils. But I love the colouring of all the flowers here. I love the colour scheme. Yeah, really love this page. This, I had a lot of fun colouring the flowers. And then I thought, oh, the background looks a bit plain. Let's colour it a nice blue. And I think I went slightly too bright on the blue. And I remember my hand was dying at the end of this because I just pressed really hard to get sort of burnished look in the background and I think my pencil was about 
that long by the time I finished and hadn't used it before. But this was coloured with the Creative Peaks, I remember. And I do absolutely love the blends of the pencils full of flowers, especially these orchids I think are really pretty. But yeah, I think if... The only thing I would change about this is the background, but there's no point changing it now. It is what it is, and the blue does give a nice colourful summery vibe to it. I think that might be the last page I've got coloured in this book, yeah. When I first started, I used to like colouring the thumbnails of these just to practice my colours. But yeah, I did a bit of testing in the back and I haven't coloured any of these single sided pages yet. So yeah, that was my very first colouring book I ever got, Magical Jungle by Johanna Basford. So after buying the Magical Jungle book and loving it so much, I went back to B&M to see if there are any more books by Johanna Basford and I saw Worlds of Wonder and I absolutely adored this book when I got it. It was my favourite book, colouring book, for such a long time. I think I do prefer Rooms of Wonder now, but this one was so much fun for me to colour when I first got it. I did the title page and I think I used, is it? I think it was Brute Fiend Squares for this. Yeah, lots of fun. I love you, including rainbows in my colouring. I coloured these just with some felt tip pens, just as a bit of fun. I think it would have been nicer if I used coloured pencils, but it was just a bit of colour to do mindless colouring. I did these two pages in the same colour scheme. I really love the look of purple and green together. I can't remember which one I coloured first, but once I coloured it, I knew I wanted to copy the page colours across to the other page so they would match. Yeah, it's a really cute bit of gold gel pen around the edge of that. I coloured this one. This one was used... I used Brute Fiona Macarons only, I think, for this page. And I love a pastel colour scheme. I want to use the same colours there and put it onto the elephant page. I just haven't got around to it. I really need to colour more in Johanna Basswood books because since I've got more in my collection, I just haven't coloured them as much recently. I also coloured this one with the Brute Fin and Macarons. I decided to go for a limited colour palette. It was a really quick, simple page to colour. And yeah, that was November 2022. I've got the colour listed here, so I can hopefully transfer them over to here because I like to have my pages matching each other sometimes but sometimes not. I coloured this one inspired by the Disneyland Paris castle and I just love the pink and the blue. I think this was with Brute Funa Squares as well. Still love looking at that one. I love this double page spread. I coloured the bike first. Ooh, the page is really dirty. Can I? Try and erase that. No, nope, that's not coming off. Ah, well. It shows that I've used the book. <laughs> I don't mind so much if um, pages get messed up after I've coloured them. I take pictures of most of my pages to put on Instagram, so I've got that to look back on if I'd like to. But it just shows that it's a well-loved book if you have a bit of dirt and scratches up on your pages. I don't mind. So, yeah, I coloured this page first. And I knew that I wanted the teal coloured bike and then I picked some colours to complement nicely with the teal. And I used those colours across on the opposite page. I love this. It looks really spring to me. Makes me really happy to look back on it. And this was coloured with the Brute Funa Squares. I think this is one of the colouring books that I have the most pages coloured in. Oh, another double page spread layout that I absolutely loved. I coloured the Sweet Treat cart first and I used my Brute Fina Squares again. Nice pastel colour scheme and I took those colours across to the cakes. I, After colouring this I realised I really love colouring cakes. It was a lot of fun coming up with different colour schemes with them. I think my favourite cake to colour is a Victoria sponge with the cream and the strawberries. I don't know, it just, the colours look really nice, it looks super appetising to me. And when I finished it I thought it was missing something so I added these polka dots in the background and yeah I think it's really effective on this page. 
I should do that more often. I coloured the lemons page. And looking back, the shading on the lemons isn't my best work. Like compared to the leaves, the leaves look super bright and vibrant and the yellow lemons look a bit washed out. But it's another completed page. Oh, another double spread I love. You know I love colouring bumblebees. And this was also done with Brief Inner Squares, both of these pages. And there's a bit of silver gel pen and gold glitter gel pen on these dots around the outside. And yeah, I love seeing everyone colouring this page on Instagram as well. It always turns out super cute. Love bees. And then I also did this really cute cottage. I love colouring little houses. This is another fun one I used. Similar colours from the background of the bee for the background here. And I used these peachy colours for the house like I did for the flowers here. Yeah, just to make it a little bit cohesive. Oh, I, I love looking back through this book. There's so many pages in it that I've coloured that I've forgotten I coloured. And it's just nice to come back and see them again. So I coloured this page first in 2022. I love using pink, yellow, blue, purple as a colour scheme together. I just think it's really cute, especially with the pastel colours. This looks like I've used some of my Brute Funa macarons. And maybe it is just Brute Funa macarons. I'm not sure if I added some squares to it, but definitely the macaron pencils. And I added some silver gel pen dots on the lanterns and silver on the border. And once again, I used the same colours here, across to here. The only thing is I missed out the yellow from there with this really cute flower gumball machine. Yep, another really cute page. Use some white dots in the background, in the flowers and to highlight the machine. This one I did a few months later in 2023. I know that this was one of the first pages I coloured in the book. I asked my mum to pick a random page for me and she picked this one and I thought, I know exactly what I'm doing. It's going to be rainbow. And I'm really happy with this. And I think it looks great even without a background. I think if I added a background, it might have taken away from the image a bit. Yeah, I think this was done with my Brute Funeral Squares again. I did these flamingos. And I worked really hard to get the blended background gradient. It looks good in this section, but with the darkest colour and the lightest colour, the blend is a bit stripey for my, for my liking. Use some silver stars in the background. This was, apart from the background, the rest of the image was really simple to colour. So I like that one. Another double page. This one, I want to say this was one of the first times that I tried doing a blended gradient background and I had just got my soft pastels for the first time but I wasn't quite happy with how light they were. I wanted to have a dark blue so it was looking like the night sky but it wasn't giving me the intensity that I wanted so I went over some of it with the pencil and tried to blend it out but it didn't. It doesn't look the best gradient but it is what it is. Silver gel pen for the moon and the stars. But I absolutely love how the owl and the house turned out. I used a lot of white gel pen. I remember using some fine liners to add a bit of texture to the owl. And I need to do that more often. It always looks really nice when you use a bit of fine liner to add texture to the page. So that was the owl. And then I used the same colours across for the tree. I remember this was a lot of fun to colour. I always love colouring Johanna Basford leaves and florals and trees and stuff like that. So yeah, another fun one. This has been a whip for quite some time. <laughs> I'm sure that lots of people who have this book have started this page and promptly given up <laughs> or abandoned it or left it for some time. I saw Amy Wardart had recently completed her whip of this page and it looked absolutely stunning. There's so many beautiful versions of this page out here. There. I've mainly used um, felt tip pen to base this image 
I used a combination of, I think, Faber-Castells and some Tombows that I had at the time. And I just really need to come back and do some pencil shading and then it would be done. But there are so many little tiny details that I'm not too sure about coming back just yet. <laughs> this I coloured as a colour along on my Instagram um, Instagram page and it was this cute floral cat this was for the month of February last year I can't believe it was last year I think that was the last time I coloured in this book was last year in February I've got note of the pencils I've used here so I can copy them across to this page eventually but yeah I really liked how this turned out I liked use it, making my own pattern on the cat used a bit of glitter gel pen in the dots for the background. Yeah, really cute. I often colour my cat's ginger because I have a little ginger cat, but I decided to go a bit different for this one and I liked how the black and white contrasted with the pink and green. So I went for that. This double page, I absolutely loved it. And then I ruined it slightly. <laughs> I used soft pastel for the background and I thought if I just Went over the whole page to start with and then colour over the top, it would cover it up. But my eraser didn't quite work at rubbing it out. And you can see sort of some muddy colours around the oranges of the fish. And it was really bad on these coral bits. So what I ended up doing is using a white Posca pen, I think, over the top. And then I think I coloured it with a felt tip pen, actually, just to give it this pink colour because it was meant to be pink and I was so disappointed when I finished this but then looking back at it now and looking at it above as a bigger picture it looks quite nice actually I love doing this sort of like washi tape effect here I knew I wanted to have a nice contrast between the border and the main image and you know what looking back I actually quite like this page I do remember the grief it caused me, but it was a learning experience and it did have me a little bit afraid to use soft pastel again, but I have used it since and I've got better at applying it and at knowing when to apply it and what areas to try and avoid. Another double page here. I did the cat sleeping on the cart and as I said I often like to colour ginger cats like my own and I remember finding this colour palette online used brute funeral squares to colour it and I copied the same colours there as I did here once again I love colouring these cakes I need to definitely start colouring some more in this book because coming back through it I just love every page I've coloured in this I think that might be the last page not sure if there's any more. No, yeah, that was the last page. Oh, and I do have one other whip. I started this. I remember colouring it on the couch downstairs as I was watching TV with my mum. And I knew I wanted a rainbow colour scheme because of all the rainbows here. So I coloured them in bright colours. I coloured the butterflies in bright colours as well. Sort of the reverse rainbow going up and down each of the columns. And then I did the flowers in some pastel colours. But I now want to go back and sort of deepen them up a bit. I think I want to do a black background, some gold stars. And I think some gold detailing on the white sections of these butterflies. So it wouldn't take too long to finish, but it's been a whip for well over a year now. So I'll see if I ever finish it. But yeah, that was all the pages I've completed in Worlds of Wonder. I think this is one of the books that I've completed the most pages in so far. But it has been over a year now since I last coloured in it. I should get back to it soon. That was Worlds of Wonder by Joanna Bassford. Next, I got 30 Days of Creativity. I thought this would be a great book to get. When I first started colouring, I was quite busy with work and I didn't have much time to colour. So I thought this would be great to do a little bit each day. And I thought I'd start doing it in order. But once I got more books in my collection, I haven't really come back to it in quite a few years now, actually, since probably summer of 2022. So I did the title page 
think I used my Brute Funeral Squares for this one and a bit of silver gel pen on the writing to give it a little bit of extra detail. I did the nameplate page. I like using purples and pinks for my flowers, a bit of yellow for some flowers. Yeah. This was the first proper page I did. I had fun colouring in all of these. And then I made my own patterns. These were all completely plain to start with, so I added my own patterns. This one I slightly messed up, so I decided to just go over with a black pen and go over the top with a white pencil to give it a monochromatic look. And I think it looks all right like that. This page I absolutely loved doing. I remember I based it with some felt tip pens and went over and shaded the images. I love colouring cakes and I love the colour scheme I used. These jars were a lot of fun to colour as well on the other side. Yeah, looking back at this just makes me smile. This was a mandala page that you, I think she had started this one and then you had to go around and complete it. So I did that, I had a lot of fun with that and then I decided let's use some felt tip pens and I think it would look nicer with coloured pencils but I used felt tip pens and yeah it's a nice it's a lot bolder of a look than I usually do. But yeah, that was another page completed. And that was actually the last page I completed. So I still have a lot, a lot of pages left to do in this book. And it is a fun book. I'm not sure when I'll get back to it. It's 30 Days of Creativity. And after my first few months of colouring, I realised I needed to get a Christmas book because I didn't have any books that was specifically Christmas themed and I found this one in B&M so I picked it up, Johanna's Christmas. I think I've only coloured two pages in this so far. I did the nameplate page, this was in 2021, it's quite a while ago. And what's the other one I did? I used a lot of glitter gel pen on this one and it was a lot of fun. There are a lot of really cute pages in this. This is the other page I did. Once again, a lot of glitter gel pen on the image. And I spent ages blending out this background. I just quite like how it turned out. I did this 20, early 2023, so after the end of Christmas 2022. Last year, last Christmas, I was in a bit of a colouring slump, so I didn't get round to colouring anything in December. I was very busy at work, very tired and so I didn't actually get any Christmas colouring done last year. Hopefully this year I'll be in a better mood to colour because I'd love to get some more pictures coloured in this beautiful book by Johanna Basford. Then I got Enchanted Forest and I love this book. Other than Worlds of Wonder and Rooms of Wonder, I think Enchanted Forest is my favourite of her older versions. I just love how it's like a little storybook. And I decided I was going to colour this front to back. And when I started, I coloured a lot of pages of this in a row. So this came second hand and this page had a little bit of colour on it. So I did my best to cover it up. I used my ink tense pencils for the first time on this for the background. And yeah, like how this one turned out, I used a lot of gold gel pen as I decided I wanted this to look really magical and beautiful and some gold gel pen. And other than that, I think I used Brute Funeral Squares for the rest of it. I did the book belongs to. And I love the range of browns and reddish browns that the Brute Funeral Squares has. And I love how this page turned out. I love the colour scheme bit of gold gel pen highlights. I like to add my name using a similar style to the cover title that Johanna Basford creates. So I added a few leaves of my name, Jess, here. I did all of these little details. I remember this took quite a little while and then I just decided to black out all of these hidden animals that are inside the book. The map I struggled with, 
I had a lot of fun doing the gold border, but then I wasn't sure how to approach the map itself. Looking at it now, it looks like it's missing a background, but at the time I wasn't sure what to do, so I just left it blank, and I think that's okay. I really love how these two pages turned out. This is actually one of my favourite pages from the book, and I spent a long time working on the gold for the compass. And looking back at it now, I don't think there's anything I'd change about this page. I absolutely love it. One of the, my most favourite pages I've ever covered. Then for this one, I decided to do a bit of a different colour scheme. It kind of reminds me of Ravenclaw colours from Harry Potter with the bronze and the blue. And I just sort of contrasted it nicely with this more olive toned green. Yeah, I wasn't sure how to colour this when I first started, but I love how it turned out in the end. Now this page. <laughs> I had a lot of fun colouring the trees and all the leaves and making it look really autumnal. And then I thought it needs a background. And I picked out a yellow pencil and it was a lot brighter than it turned out, than I thought it would be. It doesn't really show up as much in the camera. It looks quite muted on camera actually, but in real life it is very in your face, bright yellow kind of like pea yellow. <laughs> I actually kind of hate it. <laughs> but I just decided to turn the page and just forget about it. Unfortunately, the next page I also didn't like. I liked colouring the owl and then I did this circle and it turned out quite streaky because I used a silver metallic paint pen. And then I wasn't sure what to do for the background. I think I want to black it out with a black paint pen, but I'm not sure. My idea for this page was to have cool colours versus warm colours, so I was going to accent this with silver, accent this with gold, use reds, browns on this one, the purple owl on this one, and since colouring this, I haven't returned to this book sadly, and I really want to, but this kind of demotivated me. I wasn't happy with how this turned out, I didn't want to look at it anymore, so I just put it away. And I haven't coloured in it, well, since autumn 2022 was the last time I coloured it. I still don't see this as complete, so I didn't put a complete date like I did on the other pages. But yeah, I really do want to come back to this. I would love to see it all filled up. Maybe I just need some more motivation on that front. So yeah, that was Enchanted Forest by Johanna Basford. Then, when I got Enchanted Forests, I actually found it on Facebook Marketplace. And this lady was selling that book along with this book for a really cheap price. I want to say it was £5 for both of them. So I thought, you know what, I'll get Secret Garden. It wasn't necessarily on my wish list at the time. And I got striped washi tape up in here. You'll see this on my books. This means that it's untouched. And I have not coloured anything in this book so far. And flicking through it... Not much catches my eye. I'm not sure what it is about this book. I think it's one, the words of like prompting you to add things. I'm not a big fan of, like most people. I'm not a big fan of the pointy leaves and all these sort of like sharp angles of them and the black backgrounded bits that seem a bit random. But there are some pages in here which are really cute. I quite like this page. But yeah, I'm not sure if I will colour in this or I might actually de-stash it. But I got it as a deal and I thought I might as well pick it up at the same time as the Enchanted Forest book. So that was Secret Garden by Johanna Basford. And I got Wild of Flowers. This one is such a beautiful book, but I haven't coloured too much in it. It's a bit dusted around the page. I did this sugar skull page and I had a lot of fun colouring this one. I decided to use paint pens for the skull part and I decided to contrast the bright, bold, vivid, almost neon colours with these soft pastel colours for the flowers on the top. I know I use Brutfina macarons for that and then my paint pens for that the skull image. Yeah, that was fun to colour. I did this one 
use my favourite pink and purple colour scheme. And I use brute thinner squares on this. Got glitter gel pens in the background because I finished it and I wasn't sure what to do for a background. I didn't want to ruin it, but I knew it needed something. So I decided to just add some glitter gel pen dots and I think it looks really nice like that. There's a lot of gorgeous pages in here that I just haven't got around to. This page wasn't my favourite when I finished it. I did this as a buddy colour so I felt like I needed to finish it and I did. And I'm happy I did. But I think this is the last page I coloured in April of last year, 2023. I liked the sh colouring the shelf. I like colouring the pots. I hate the background. <laughs> you can't really see it too well but I just did this light brown pencil and... It just doesn't look very good. But oh well, we turn the page and we move on. This one I really love. This was coloured in 2022 with my Brute Fina Square pencils. And I remember using a lot of ink tents pencil for the background. This was a buddy colour. I think it was with Amy. I think it was the first one we actually did. But yeah, I really love how this turned out. And I had a lot of fun playing with the different colour scheme some more dark deeper tones compared to my usual bright pastel tones this one was another fun page to color i experimented a lot with coloring the silver and i think on this page it actually really works well and it actually comes across as silver often i'll try and color silver and it just looks gray <laughs> gold i can do but silver is a bit more of a struggle but i think this looks really nice and once again the pink and purple flowers uh, i'm pretty sure this was colored with brute fina squares as well And I think that might be it from this book. Oh, no, I did the title page. This is the first one I did. I used Brute Fina Macarons and a lot of silver gel pen for dots and details and for my name. So, yeah, not too many coloured in this one. Wild of Flowers by Johanna Bassford. Then I got, I think, my favourite Johanna Bass Bassford book, Rooms of Wonder. And I coloured in this... This was actually the book I had the most coloured pages in last year. I think I coloured nine in it last year. This was the first page I coloured, these simple keys. This is what I was saying with the previous book. I think this one looks quite realistic as gold, but this just looks grey, <laughs> not necessarily silver. I think this bit looks quite silvery, but the rest of the key just looks kind of dull and grey. But that was a fun one to practice my metals. I coloured this origami room page and when I first saw this I knew exactly the colour scheme I wanted to use. I used my Stedler the Design Journey pencils in this one. I knew I wanted a teal desk with a light wood on top, rainbow pastel colours and yeah I love looking at this page. It's so much fun. There's no white pen detail or silver or gold, just the pencils looking super bright and happy. This one, oh my gosh, this took forever. This was a buddy colour with Amy and she finished it way before I did. I spent a long time agonising over the details of this book. I knew I wanted the desk to be quite plain in comparison to everything else because I knew I wanted to use a rainbow colour scheme. But it was just the way I put the rainbow colour scheme. There were some items that I knew I could organise in a rainbow pattern, like over here with the cloths. It was all the other extra little bits that I really struggled with knowing, OK, where should I place it to make it look harmonious and not too many of the same colours next to each other. But I'm actually really proud of this page. I love how it turned out. Use my brute fina squares. And yeah, love this page. <coughs> Sorry about that. I said I coloured a lot on this page and I'm flicking through a lot of uncoloured pages. <laughs> Here was another one. I did this as a buddy colour with Happy, and I knew as soon as I saw it I wanted to use a mint colour for the case and then I knew I wanted rainbow sprinkles, rainbow wee balloons, rainbow wee uh, and I sort of did chocolate, vanilla, strawberry themed items for the toppings bar. I had a lot of fun creating the different ice cream flavours down here. But yeah, I think 
The one thing I would change is the background. I think it distracts a little bit from the main image. I think I'd probably go a bit lighter, but in order to have, I use Tombow Jewel brush pens here, and in order to get a effect where it wasn't a streaky, I went over it a couple of times and it went a bit deeper than I planned. But yeah, that was a fun page. Oh, I think this is my favourite page I've coloured in this book. It just looks awesome. <laughs> I went outside of my comfort zone adding pink to the leaves, which I had seen online. I used a lot of reference images for these sort of jungle leaves. But my favourite part of it is the shower. There's so much gel pen in it. And it's super sparkly and it just looks awesome. I used... What did I use for this? It might have been polychromos actually. Yeah, I think this was polychromos, maybe. Not sure. But yeah, loved colouring it. Oh, no. I think this is my favourite paint. <laughs> it's hard to choose. I think this is my favourite. I remember I coloured this as a challenge on Instagram to colour a page using no neutrals and only rainbow colours. So I think normally looking at this page, I would have done all the rainbowy details and made the dresser a dark wood colour or a light wood colour or grey to sort of offset from it. But because I couldn't use any uh, neutral colours, I went for a light blue and I actually love how this turned out. I think I used my brute fee in the squares for this one and a bit of silver gel pen details for the cloud and the stars in the background. And yeah, I think this is actually my favourite one. <laughs> It's just so bright and happy. I coloured these two pages. Good dirt on that one. And I used a specific colour scheme that I found online and really challenged myself to only use those few colours. I think I used Brute Funa Macarons as well as some Brute Funa Squares for the shadows on this page. And I coloured this one first and I copied the colours across to this page as well. And this was another fun one. I really love how both of them turned out, actually. Looking at them together looks really satisfying. Here I've got the owl post room. I had a lot of fun colouring this. And it used a lot of neutrals, which isn't usually my go-to. So I thought it needs a accented colour so I added a bit of purple for the bag and I decided after I coloured this that this background of the page needs to be purple so I went ahead coloured the background purple coloured the packages based them and then I haven't quite finished it <laughs> I do still plan to come back to this I just need to be in the mood for doing tiny repetitive details and I just haven't been recently <laughs> but I think this will look really nice when it's fully coloured next to each other I've got the mid-century pineapple room. I loved finding a colour scheme for this online and using the bright, bold patterns inspired by mid-century. I used polychromos for this page and I especially love how the chair turned out with the magenta, the dark teal and the yellow. I think that looks a really nice colour combo together. That was a fun page. And I coloured this one last year for my birthday, the 13th of February. And I did the birthday cake party room. And as it was for my birthday, I used my favourite colours, rainbow pastel colours. <laughs> and but uh, with the majority focus being on this lilac purple, because that is my favourite colour. And that was a lot of fun to colour. What did I use on this one? I want to say this was Brute Funas, mixture of squares and macarons, but I'm not 100% sure. And that one. And the last one I've got coloured in here is the bathroom page. I used Stedler Design Journey pencils on this one. I started off by colouring the leaves and I had a lot of fun blending them out. I think the hydrangeas look really nice and the whole colour scheme just really works for this page. A little bit of silver gel pen in the background. But yeah, another really cute one. So yeah, looking at my tracker down here, there's a total of 78 pages in this book. I've actually completed 12, which is not too bad. 
but I haven't coloured in this book for quite a few months. I need to come back to it. Rooms of Wonder by Johanna Basford. We're almost at the end, guys. This is the penultimate book. Johanna Basford's Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. I have wanted this book for ages, and I don't know why it took me so long to get it, but I finally did last year because I was super inspired by Disney Meg's colouring and Amanda Colours, who started colouring this book front to back, and I wanted to try and catch up with them. They are quite far ahead. Um, where are they in the book? I think they're maybe just under halfway. Oh, this was the last page they coloured. And I've <laughs> got as far as the Wonder Room, and this I have been working on for months. I will go back to the start and go through it with you. So I coloured the title page first. I used some bright gem colours. My favourite thing about this page is actually these pearls. I think they look really nice. I had a lot of fun colouring the gold, and a lot of gold gel pen around the outside to make it look nice and fancy. I did these pages and in this book I have been using Black Widows only. I had just received my Black Widows when I got this book and I thought I'm going to exclusively use them in this book. So it looks a bit more cohesive using the same brand throughout. I know I want to do my butterfly all pastel rainbow colours with gold gel pen details so that's how I coloured it at the front here. This was the first proper double page spread. Really fun to colour. As I said earlier, I love colouring Johanna Basford cakes. I also love colouring strawberries. And I decided to put Ivy in this pale yellow dress with green leaves and details on it. I just thought that that would go with most pages that I did. It wouldn't clash with anything. Then I did the small items page. I Spent a long time colouring the gold items and I also did some more bronzy tones, which was really fun, silver. And then I picked a few colours to sort of go along with it. So I picked blues, purples and pinks and a few reds. Yeah, this was fun to colour. And this was the last page I completed. It was the end of July last year and immediately after I finished this page, I started this page. And it still isn't done. I've been chipping away at it for over half a year now. For quite some time, it was just the brown elements I'd done. I've recently come back and added some silver elements, the blue, and I just chip away at this a little every now and then. I do have my colours recorded down so I can come jump back to it at any time. Looking at it now, I'm actually quite inspired to colour in it today, so I might keep this aside. But yeah, I want to catch up with Disney Meg's and Amanda's group buddy colour. My, th I have thought about skipping this page and coming back to it later and going on to this page, but I like the idea of challenging myself to colour front to back, not jumping around. And yeah, there is still a lot, a lot of pages to do. I think as soon as I finish this one... I will be ready to colour every page. I can do a couple of months and it shouldn't, well, it will take me a while to catch up with them, but not as long as it has been. So yeah, that's Ivy and the Inky Butterfly by Johanna Basford. I'm going to leave that aside so I can colour it today. And finally, we have Johanna Basford's latest book, Small Victories. And I have started one page in this so far, but for some reason, I love this book. But I just have struggled to decide where and how to start it. So someone reached out to me to do a buddy colour. And I was like, absolutely. And we are colouring this page here. The floral pencils. I absolutely love this page. I've started with the leaves. And I know I want the colours to match alongside this one. So I thought I'd colour this around the same time as this. So I can pick the same colours into it. I started off by colouring this small fruit salad bowl. I had a lot of fun with it and creating all the details of the different fruits. But yeah, hoping to finish this page off before the end of the month and potentially this one as well. So yeah, that is the only thing I've started so far in Johanna Basford's Small Book Victories, but I know I definitely want to colour more in this. So yeah, 
that was my entire Johanna Basford colouring book collection. This video has gone on quite a bit, so I will leave you now. Uh, let me know which artist you would like to see next. I've got a whole list of colouring book artists to go through, and I will dedicate one or two artists to each video. So yeah, let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone!